Hi there, Internet. My name's Ollie and I love air guns. Welcome to the Classic Air Gun Show. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of the Classic Air Gun Show. Been a bit of a break, mainly due to uh, weather here in the UK. We've had an incredibly wet May, uh, but the sun's out. We're back with a bang and I've got an absolute stonker for you today. Now, if you remember in one of the previous uh, episodes we looked at the Theobin SLR 88. Well if you recall that so introduced in 1988 incredibly high quality gun um, but due to production costs etc and, and the corresponding cost of the gun it was phased out around 1992. Now it was incredibly well loved so actually as Theobin continued to advance their manufacturing methods through the 1990s, particularly seeing the, the increase in the use of CNC uh, engineering. This meant that they could actually start producing uh, their models more efficiently. So this led to a, a relook at the SLR 88 and the introduction of the SLR 98 in 1998. Now, some of the key differences between the two are, first of all, how it was made. So actually using some more CNC and, and other efficient engineering techniques, they were able to produce it cheaper. It was still not a cheap gun, but it meant that it was actually economical for Theobin to produce and keep it in their lineup. Now, key features, so very, very similar in outward appearance to the uh, to the SLR88. Here, obviously, we have a thumbhole stocked version. Um, if you look up front, some of the key changes. So, whereas on the 88, you had a push button to release uh, the the sort of ball bearing for the uh, the underlever. Here, you still had the ball ball bearing, but it was just sort of held by via friction with a little uh, hole in the end of the muzzle cap. Uh, you still had the the integral silencer. But this had a cap on the front that you could unscrew and actually left a sort of half UNF thread that you could actually attach a further silencer to if required. Um, still, same principle of design. So it's still a seven shot magazine fed underlever rifle, so fixed barrel. Uh, the, again, the, the magazine itself was, was the, the same design as the 88 and the, um, and the Rapid 7. So insert the first pellet backwards, use that then to, to create the, um, the resistance to then turn and load all the subsequent chambers. Um, trigger wise, so uh, as, as the have sort of continued to work on and, and improve the trigger through the 90s, that then reflected here as well. Uh, this actually has a plastic trigger guard. So again, you're seeing some of the um, uh, some of the changes and, and the, the cost savings uh, that were taking place to still be able to produce this rifle and get it to market at a sort of reasonable consumer price. Um, other key changes, so the, the woodwork, so we, if you remember that SLR-88 had, had a stunning uh, walnut sporter stock. The majority of the SLR-98 actually came in a sport stock design which did evolve slightly over its production run so very early models sort of mirrored what you'd see on the Taurus and the olympus with sort of raised cheek piece panels i'll see if i can get some pictures of those um, and these were obviously very striking very good grip and, and very evocative of uh, Theobans of, of that era and you saw that carrying over into the, the Scirocco 2000 as well. Um, later on they, they had other sports style designs with more, more conventional uh, foregrips and that was also reflecting the fact that whereas Theobin in the 90s were very famous for using the, the Schedua uh, African hardwood as that became more restricted in, in its availability cost but also being allowed to use it uh, they transitioned more to, more to walnut. So here we have an example of the, the other stock design, the, the thumb hole. As you can see, it's, it's, it's very reminiscent of um, uh, the, the sort of the CS custom stock, CS sort of, I believe it's the, the 7 or the 800 design. So very straight vertical grip, uh, thumb up or, or thumb through the thumb hole design um, with a very high cheek piece. Also, quite interestingly, is actually, I don't know if you'll see it on the video, um, this has quite a quite a high degree of cast to it now as, as a shotgun shooter i'm very familiar with cast um, and this ha this has a more cast than you'd normally see on air guns and it's and it's actually fabulously comfortable to hold now the majority of the slr 98s came in a, in a carbine length uh, and that makes this one in particular quite unusual because it's very unusual to find a, a, a an almost target style uh, setup, which is this incredibly long barrel in 177 with, with the target style stock. 
So uh, I did a bit of digging and a lot, a lot of uh, help from uh, guys on the on the Theobin Gas Round Forum and, and also the um, the Rapid7, sorry, not Forum, group on Facebook and also on the Theobin Rapid7 owners group as well. So thank you to, to all of those who have helped. And um, so I've d d managed to dig out a bit of a, a bit of a story behind these. So, um, and I verified this with the, with the guys up in Blackpool. So it turns out that this specification was originally ordered by uh, the team at Blackpool Air Rifles. So I rang them and, and asked them for their, their take on the story and, and they verified it. So there was, a, a, I think, approximately 10 were ordered in this specification um, by Blackpool Air Rifles to be a, a long barrel 177 with the, the thumb hole target stock. Now, the, these were incredibly popular and sold very quickly and Theobin actually thought, this is great. Actually, this is a really good specification. Let's do this ourselves. And they then did introduce the model in, again, in very limited numbers, or rather, I don't know how many. Um, and, and they were then produced sort of up until a few months before all of the changes happened at, at Theoban, um, which, which we've talked about in other videos. So uh, this one in particular is, is a very nicely set up, very elegant looking, long target style underlever rifle. Um, it's nice and unusual because of, of the, the, the vintage and the story behind it. Um, but in terms of sort of the SLR 98 versus the 88, I will say you, you can feel the slight differences in, in engineering. This is still a very high quality, very top end underlever rifle. And it's you know, equally the, the comparable to anything from, from, from Germany or from Air Arms in Sussex. Uh, you know, if not surpassing, and it should be considered as that. However, with the 88, the 88 does feel, this feels like a modern performance car compared to the, the 88, which feels like a golden age Rolls Royce. I think that's the best way of putting it. Not, so I'm not putting this down, but I'm just saying how great the 88 is. It feels quality in every way, um, from, the, from the bluing, the, uh, the wood to metal fit, even the underlever catch, everything is premium. You can see why they had to stop making it. It must have cost a fortune. Um, but this is an incredibly high quality, high performing rifle. So let, let's take it to the range and see what it can do. So there you go, predictably uh, performed incredibly well at the range. This this is, it, it feels like an out and out target rifle. And actually, if you're, you're a real diehard gas ram fan, then do you know what? This would be a, a fantastic sort of HFT uh, rifle, although it hasn't got the hamster and all those sort of bits. You could shoot pretty well. And it's got a really nice um, sort of uh, early MTC Mamba light on top of it as well, which would be the, the perfect scope for that. Um, I've done quite a bit of, bit of hunting with this one. I've also you know, shot a lot of, sort of targets in the garden. And, and it's um, you know, one of the smoother gas rams, I think is reflecting the fact that it's sort of later vintage in, in Theoban's journey. Um, very easy to sort of check the power and, and top it up or, or let it down as necessary. Um, I find this, this probably shoots smoothest around 10 and a half to 11 foot pounds, rather than trying to crank it all the way up. Uh, it also seems like the 177 barrel, the, the, the 4.52 uh, JSBs, so the 8.44 grain pellets. They, those were the ones I was using in the test. Shot incredibly well, uh, and, and it's a great starting place if you get one of these. But at any SLR 98, they, they don't come up for sale very often. You, I've seen one or two at, at auctions in the last year. I, I've seen two come up on, on sort of one on gun trader one on gun star so it was one of those things that if you see them they'll be gone within a day so if, if you know set your searches up um check check regularly because as i say if you if you miss the opportunity they will be gone but they are worth getting hold of because the, these are you know, very late model theobans now uh, and actually they they are sort of at, at the top of um you know gas ram design and, and nothing that's come since and certainly since the end of the demise of, of uh, Theobin has, has come anywhere close to this level of quality um, and it's also to be remembered this isn't just an underlever recoiling rifle it's a multi-shot 
and uh, I, I know there's a lot of multi-shot spring rifles on the market now, but nothing, and I mean nothing, has come close to the SLR 88 and the SLR 98, due to quality, performance, design. You know, these things were, were elegant, good looking, powerful, accurate. You know, it was a full package. They weren't cheap. They're certainly not cheap if you find them today, but they're worth every penny. Uh, these are fabulous air guns. They're really evocative of, of that, that period of, of British engineering and gas ram design. So if you do find one, uh, I would grab hold of it and, uh, and enjoy shooting it. I'm incredibly fortunate to, to have really? had this sort of pass through my hands um, and to be able to compare an 88 and a 98. So please, I hope you do um, learn a bit more about it. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, as I say, if you do get the opportunity, grab it with both hands. Um, and look, if there's any other rifles you want me to look at, as always, I will put the, uh, the email address at the, end of, um, at the end of the video. And also, if uh, you know, I'm going to stop trying to put more of my air gun stuff onto my, my Instagram channel, so I'll put the, um, uh, my handle at the end of uh, the video as well. But look, thank you very much. It's great to be back. Great that weather's better. Lots more to come. We've got some really exciting videos coming up. I've got a HW35 Vixen, which um, caused a bit of a stir on, on the Virat group on, um, on Facebook, which is great. So I'm really excited to be showing you that. Uh, I'm also going to be doing something fun for, for the kids. It's a really uh, early entry level kids rifle. Um, so look, stay tuned and those will be coming out in the next few weeks. But thank you, take care and see you at the internet.